Hey, welcome to this video on Blue Zones. So it surprises me often how many people still don't know what a Blue Zone is. Um, and it's something that I'm really excited about. I've, I've read a lot about, I'm really interested in because Blue Zones are areas of the world where people live a long time. They're just, there's a natural, um, maybe not natural, but they, they haven't necessarily deliberately lived a long time. They've just ended up living a long time and they live up to 100, 120 years old. And there's certain spots um, and uh, around the world where, where they've done that. And somebody called Dan Butner has uh, written this book called Blue Zones Challenge and uh, written a fair, fair amount about the Blue Zones, created this great documentary on Netflix, which, um, which you know, if you're interested in, go and check it out, Blue Zones. And um, what he found was there is one in uh, Okinawa, Japan, one in Sardinia, uh, Icaria, Greece, Costa Rica, and in a couple of other places. And there are some things that are common across all of those people. And I'll tell you a bit more about what they are as well. Now, the other thing that's really exciting, layering on top of the commonalities. So if we can get our habits and change our lifestyles a bit to, to match those people in the blue zones and layer on some of the science that's really evolving around the subject, uh, there is some real good evidence to show that we can live to 150, maybe even maybe even longer than that, um, which is quite exciting. Now, obviously, it opens up loads of debates like, is there space, blah, blah, blah. But if you have an abundance mindset, and there is definitely, it's definitely okay, so long as people have a purpose. Uh, and that's the key, that's one of the key parts of living a long time, you have to have a purpose. And in Japan, they have a word for it, which is Ikigai. And there's a book called Ikigai, another great book. Uh, if you want to read about it some more. And uh, in Ikigai, Ikigai, you, you're finding your purpose. It's like, what's your reason for being? And I believe they also had a word for it in Costa Rica, but I can't remember exactly what it is right now. So so some of the common things then, um, close relationships. Really important that you create close networks of people. In Japan, they have a word for it called Moai. And um, these are groups of friends who, some of them have been together for 70 odd years. Uh, they have like bank accounts just for the Moai. So if someone needs help, they can draw from the bank account. Uh, they pull together when that, when somebody is in need. They just go, they meet up, they have healthy food, they do healthy activities together. They um, you know, just support each other through thick and thin. And I think that's a really nice thing. Um, in many of the Blue Zones, they have something similar. Uh, maybe it's organized, maybe it's just naturally what they do is part of their communities. They meet up regularly. They they have healthy food together um, and they're not necessarily wealthy people. This is the other thing that a lot of uh, people assume that um, to live a long time, to live healthily, you need to eat lots of expensive protein. And actually, you don't need to necessarily eat an expensive protein. You don't need to buy expensive meat. Um, in fact, they didn't eat a lot of meat. We found that they did occasionally do eat meat. They're not like they don't have far hard and fast rules, but re meat generally is not available in these areas. So they're eating legumes, lentils, um, all sorts of things. There's there's diets, there's um, recipe guides in here, and um, you can go and look up Blue Zone recipes, and you'll find um, that you know. So so, the, so you'll find lots of things. So nutrition and nourishment is important, but it's actually not the most important thing. The most important thing was those relationships. They also you'll be pleased to hear drink moderately. So they moderately drink, and usually it's red wine and it's high in a particular molecule, so you've got to get the right red wine, you can't just have any old red wine. Um, and the, the particular molecule has been identified through the, through the science. So now I'm layering on the, uh, the Lifespan book, which is by uh, David Sinclair, who's a PhD Harvard professor, so he really knows his stuff. Uh, and that molecule is called Revitarol, and they, they've actually, you can even buy that as a supplement now. So you can actually buy this supplement we found this great uh, supplement company that we're testing at the ages called at the moment called do not age.com. Um, and we're trying out a few of their supplements and already my sleep's better. Uh, and I'm just feeling a bit more energetic and I'm just excited, which you can probably tell. Um, yeah. So there's, so that's just like the basic stuff. Now we've got, if we go even higher level than that, we've got stem cells, we've got different medications that you can take to improve your longevity. And there's a, there's a couple of, crazy billionaires out there who are pushing this stuff. Um, and yeah, the science is looking like that we're actually going to get to this point where we can 
maybe even outpace death. And it's an interesting uh, idea. I don't know whether it will it will really happen or not, but we'll see. And um, and I love the fact that in in lifespan in the book, he makes a really good argument for aging being a disease and, a, and an avoidable disease. So as we age, things happen in our bodies, notably our telomeres, which are strands of DNA get shorter. And so he's identified how you can stop that happening and how you can use some of these supplements to stop that happening, which is crazy. So let's go, that's, that's a bit of higher level stuff. Back down to the basics, we've got close relationships, we've got healthy food, We've got, obviously, they move, they're fit, they're healthy, they don't have high amounts of body fat. They've got reasonably good muscle tone, and you'll see in the, if you watch the Netflix documentary, like, there's some, there's some pretty fit 100-year-olds, pretty cool, uh, fitter than a lot of 50-year-olds, I would say, in this country. Uh, they're still out and about, they're, they're doing their gardening, and the garden, having a garden where they grow their own food, that was another commonality between them all. Um, so there's lots of things that... You know, you don't need to worry about all the supplements and all this high level science yet. Um, let's get those basics in place because there's loads of things that you can do for free, which will increase your longevity. And like I said, it's not just about increasing longevity. It's about living a purposeful, purposeful life, being a little, you know, less stressed. Uh, they're not, they're pretty chill people. They're not stressed out. And they're much happier because they have close relationships. And we human beings are, you know, we, we are tribal. We do need to, to have human connection. It's something that we've evolved to have around us at all times. So really recommend you kind of dive into some of these, these books um, if you're interested in longevity and resilience, because of course we need to be resilient now so that we can deal with stress throughout our lives. All right, thanks for watching. And uh, if you like this video, please do give it a like follow the channel and uh, I'll see you in the next, next video.